So welcome everyone, and I want to thank you so much for taking the time today to, for, for the eUniversity series of webinars that we are presenting. Practi uh, my name is Carol Vickers, and I work with Empower Consulting Group. We partner with Practice Pay Solutions to provide these educational webinars for everyone and to provide fabulous content and information that's going to make a difference for you. As many of the listeners know, Practice Pay Solutions provides many wonderful uh, solutions to business owners, and this, this is one of them. The intention of our webinars is to provide information that you will be able to use right away. It is hands-on and so valuable. And in that regard, we are very, very fortunate this morning to have Deb Lee with us. Deb Lee is a certified professional organizer and productivity specialist in the Washington, D.C. metro area. And she's the founder of D. Allison Lee Professional Organizers. Deb also loves technology, and we are so happy to hear that <laughs> because she's going to help us today with our apps that our business owners need. She helps entrepreneurs make sense of small business tech tools, and her new venture, Soho Tech Training, is, is, is the vehicle for that. She is a blogger and shares tips life hacks and shortcuts on how to stay organized and productive. Her advice has been featured on USA Today, on WUSA9 television, Evernote.com, and regularly at Rubbermaid.com, Uncluttered.com, and The Clutter Diet. You can also connect with Deb via Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. So today we are very, very lucky to have Deb with us to provide us some of this information. And thank you, Deb, so much for joining us and sharing your brilliance. Oh, my pleasure. I am happy, happy to be here today. So I just wanted to spend a few minutes just to, with a few questions for you, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. I'd be happy to answer questions. Can you tell us how you got your started on this journey to organization and, and tech information? Yes. Uh, you know, um, in terms of the organization piece, I probably... I've always been organized. I remember rearranging the furniture in my mom's living room, um, sort of a monthly thing I would do. I would try to rearrange the fruit in the fruit bowl. I, you know, I was always trying to find a, a better, more strategically placed way of, of doing things. That's not to say I wasn't a messy kid. I think every child is. Yeah. Um, but I just seem to have a knack for that. Uh, you know, my background in teaching, really does require um, you to be organized and to sort of really have a plan of, of action for just about mm. everything that you're doing. So I probably have been organized for most of my life. Um, and then the tech, I just seem to have an affinity for technology. Um, mm. I you know, love apps. You know, I'm probably the most fickle person where it comes to apps because I'm always looking for the next one. I always want to see what else is there. Um, I really like the fact that they can help you get stuff done, get done, mm. get those things done efficiently, quickly, easily. Uh, you know, apps can really uh, move you forward, not just on a personal level, but also obviously from a business standpoint. So um, the tech side probably came along a little bit later as I got older. Uh, but now that I'm able to take my teaching background, uh, I also have a background in psychology, so now I've got psychology and teaching, and now the technology sort of melded together all in one with, um, with what I do with my clients today. So um, long story, but you know, hopefully an interesting one. Well, thank you. And I've had an opportunity to take a look at your website. And it's inspiring to read about the services that you offer your clients and your mission and your philosophy that goes behind all of it. What's the biggest difference that you see when your clients get inspired about organization and they start to use the tools for their businesses? Oh, wow. I mean, you know, one of the best things is when someone says that thing that we talked about or that strategy that we came up with, it's working and I feel less stressed. I don't feel this pressure that I had before. I feel as though I have direction and I can actually be productive. I can be efficient. And, and even on those days when, you know, things aren't always going the way that we want them to, when you have a foundation uh, to fall back on, you have a set of rules or strategies that you can use, you know, that's the best thing when, when they call me out of the blue or send me an email or a text saying, it's working. <laughs> that yeah. thing we did is working. And so that's the best feeling. Um, it's amazing. Excellent. 
Yes. Well, your expertise in technology is so timely. We all are feeling a little behind on the, you know, what's new. So we look forward to learning more about the apps that will make our lives more streamlined and organized. So how do we begin? Yes. Okay, so today I have uh, collected a group of apps across four topic areas. So apps that will help you conquer your tasks and your projects, those that will help you to back up your files, as well as those that will help you stay on top of social media, and then finally, uh, apps that will help you manage your finances and the paper that goes along with those finances. So those are the main topics that we'll be covering today. So hopefully everyone will get um, a bit of information that's new or something that they'll learn about an app that perhaps they may have heard about before. Thank you. All right, so we'll just jump right in. Uh, so what we're going to cover, the way I've done this uh, for our tasks and projects, you know, tasks and projects are two different things and sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that they're the same. A task mm -hmm. is an isolated action item, but when it is attached to a project, there is a beginning, a finite beginning and end. And so a task can live by itself on its own. So for instance, I need to update my bookkeeping. That's a task. But if I'm working on creating an ebook, then that is a project that has several tasks attached to it and it might even involve other people. And so as I went through the apps that I thought would be helpful for today's presentation, I really broke them up according to tasks, getting these things done in isolation, or project management. So the ones that we'll be covering today, and there are quite a few, um, are I Done This, Wonderful Day, Now Do This, and Do, and I'm using actually one of those, so I'll, I'm really excited to talk about that. And then for project management, there's Trello, Action Method, and Unstuck. Um, I also use one of those that I just mentioned, and there's that, that last one, Unstuck, I think will be really interesting for folks to take a look at. So these are the ones that we will start off with today. Thank you. All right, so I done this. Um, and as you'll notice, as we go through each of these slides, you'll see that I give sort of a short summary of what the application does, and then I go into a little bit more detail about how it works. Um, this certainly doesn't encompass everything that the apps do. Let me just give you sort of a, an inside peek, an overview of some of the key features. So that being said, I done this is a really cool and fun app that lets you create a done list. And most of us are usually trying to create a to-do list. And what I like about this is that it, it prompts you. This app says, what did you get done today? Or what did you do yesterday? So it's, it's a way of tracking your accomplishments, of tracking mm -hmm. the things that you actually got done. And it's a nice way of looking at what you've done versus, oh my goodness, I haven't done those, those things I said I was going to do. This yeah. really helps you to put them in a nice category, a nice sort of bucket of, these are my accomplishments for the day. And you can just go in and simply enter those tasks that you've completed. Um, you can sync your, um, this app with the, uh, the web account at idonethis.com, so a nice feature there. Um, and it is, um, you can use it with you know, your iPhone, your iPad, Mac, um, several um, uh, other applications like Alfred and Focus Bar. So it's, it gives you a few features that I think um, would be helpful to all. So, this is a really cool one. I, I happen to like the name of this app. Um, it is not grammatically correct, but it does certainly get your attention. Um, so that's I Done This. Okay. And the next one, Wonderful Day. One, again, I, I love the name of this app. Um, it is really great for folks who are visual learners. Uh, this app really helps you to, to build or create and sustain habits based on visual cues. Um, if you've heard of Jerry Seinfeld, um, he's a comedian here in the, in the States, uh, United States, um, and he uh, had a productivity method or secret, as he called it, where he would um, take a paper calendar and each time he wanted to accomplish a task, or that he did accomplish a task, that is, he would put a red X on each day that he completed that task. So he would create a chain of red Xs but if there was a day that he missed that task, then there would be no red X, and he would have broken the chain. So visually, he was not happy with that scenario, and he found that having 
a chain of red X's really helped him to keep building that habit of doing the same thing he wanted to do every day. And so Wonderful Day is um, a tech version of that. You're not using a paper calendar. Basically, you're using this app that will give you a green dot for every completed goal. And if you miss a goal, then you get a red dot. Um, so again, great for visual learners. Um, and you will get a daily nudge from the app as well that says, hey, you've got to get some stuff done if you haven't already. So this is a really good one, I think. Um, I like the name. Again, it's very positive sounding. Um, but beyond that, it really helps you to create that habit so that you can really accomplish that same task. Now you can include one goal or multiple goals, but perhaps you want to make sure that you check your accounting um, and dollars and cents every, every week on a specific, a specific day, or maybe uh, you want to make sure that you get up from your desk at a specific time every day and you know, get some movement in and be sure that you're hydrated and, and fueled for the day. You want to create a habit around some best practices. You can enter those and really keep tracking them and see how well you do across a specified time frame. So I'm really, um, really excited about this app. Very cool. Very cool. Yes. And so the next one on the list is called Now Do This. Very <laughs> simple. <laughs> it makes sense, right? Do what you need to do and please do it now. Um, what's nice about this app is that it allows you to practice single tasking. Basically, it gets you to focus on one thing at a time, um, which is a good thing to do because, as you know, when we multitask, it's one, not good for our brain cells, and we do a lot of task switching. We're not able to really focus on one thing for a specified time frame and give it our full attention, and we can't really produce our best work. So single tasking typically is the way that you want to go. I'm sure there will be some folks who say, no, we have to multitask. But as an organizer, certainly um, productivity does increase, um, and I, I recognize that um, mm -hmm. folks are practicing single tax tasking. So I basically, think it's a myth that we can multi multitask. <laughs> I think you're right, and I, and I think that came up because, you know, oftentimes, you know, when you, you go on that job interview or speak with someone, they'd say, well, are you able to multitask? You know, can you manage a fast-paced environment and do many things at the same time? And, and the goal was that you would say yes, and you would sort of train yourself to do that. But really, uh, what you're doing is just task switching. You're not really getting your best work done. So, and there's some research to back that up as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so Now Do This um, is a very, very simple app, very minimalist app. It is web-based. Um, you know, when you go to uh, nowdothis.com, it will say write your to-do list in the box, and then you click the ready button. So you can put as many um, items in the box, but once you hit the ready button, the app brings up your first item. It doesn't show you all of them. It just brings up your first item, and when you are finished with that item, you click done. And you keep going through each of the items that you put on the list until you are, quote unquote, all done. And that's what the app will tell you when you're all finished. Um, and as you go through, each of your tasks, it will give you the opportunity to edit them if you'd like. Um, so you can change them if you feel that perhaps you know you want to take something out or add something in. You can certainly do that. But it is really a way to get you to just focus on one thing at a time. There are no bells and whistles with this app. There are no icons, no you know no pretty pictures. There isn't yeah. someone sort of checking in with you. How how is it going? It really is very minimalist um, and really geared to helping you get stuff done. And this next one called Do is perhaps my favorite. It is now my new favorite. I've been using it for, oh, probably almost 10, 10 11 months. I've been using it for quite some time now. Um, again, very simple, extremely persistent and annoying. <laughs> and I say that with a chuckle because it is super duper annoying. Um, when you put in a task that you need to do and attach a reminder to it, the app will continually remind you to get it done until you've gotten it done. Uh, so you can set the reminder for every minute or every hour. And for me, as you might have guessed, it is set for every minute. <laughs> so if it is not done every minute, and so you'll tell the app that you're done by like, clicking a, a radio button or a checkbox uh, right. that says, OK, I'm, I'm finished with that task, and then it, the reminder will stop. But until you do that, you are definitely nudged. <laughs> um, 
often. So it is a continuous reminder of, of your overdue tasks. Um, you can uh, use uh, reminders over and over again, so you can recycle them. So if there is a specific task that you do on a regular or recurring basis, you can certainly um, set it up to happen in a regular way. Um, it does also give you a few uh, quick panel features or options, so you can, with just a tap of a finger, just one action, you can either add another 10 minutes to your reminder or reschedule it for another day. Uh, so it's it's very intuitive. It, again, it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but it does give you enough um, that I think it helps you to get your stuff done. Um, so I I really do enjoy using this, and I say enjoy loosely because sometimes it is annoying. <laughs> yeah. um, and with this app, you can also email reminders to other people. So if you are delegating, which as business owners we should be, you can mm -hmm. create. Uh, a task that someone else, perhaps you're working with an assistant or a virtual assistant, an in intern or a team member or a partner, and you can email them specific things that you would like them to take care of. So that app is called Do, one of my favorites. Great. And now we're moving into the project management apps. Um, this one is so far my all-time favorite project management app. It is called Trello, and I use it every day. As I use Do every day, I use Trello every day. Mm -hmm. You can keep track of isolated projects or, or tasks related to projects, or you can pull them all together um, in one big bucket. Um, so I, I have several buckets or several categories of, of projects that I'm working on, and Trello really helps me to take a look at those in a very visual way. Uh, basically, uh, the app allows you to create what they call boards, and I liken them to bulletin boards where you would be pinning things to those boards. You know, in real life when we use a bulletin board, sometimes things can get very jumbled and, and messy and things start covering each other. And what's nice about this app is that you can add things to your board, but they're, they're visible, they're clear. You can see them, nothing is overlapping. Um, you, see, you see all the steps that you need to see, uh, so it's very, very, very visual in that way, so I do like it because of that reason. You can also upload photos and files, so if you are working or collaborating with someone else, and by the way, you can collaborate with someone else, you can invite someone to join your board, um, and you can invite them to join just a specific board, you don't have to sh have them see everything, so that's mm -hmm. very a nice feature there. Um, so you can upload files, um, like photos, or other documents that you want someone else to take a peek at. And so that's a really nice feature, I think, to have. So really great collaboration tool. Again, good for those um, visual learners who like seeing everything, but in an organized way. So not like your traditional bulletin board, a bit more organized than that. Not I that. like that this one is available on a number of different platforms. So if your team is working with different platforms, you can collaborate Absolutely. across platforms. This was the only one that I found um, that really mentioned the Windows 8 tablet. So I was uh, I was really intrigued to see that. Of course, it's you know you can use it on your Android and your iPad or iPhone, and I believe also your I, uh, iPod Touch, and it's web based as well. So, uh, but the Windows 8 tablet is a feature here, so very cool for for people with you know a variety of devices. Yeah. And the next one is called Action Method. This is really good for those people who are working with teams. So if you do have uh, a group of people that you work with that are sort of far flung, um, you're not, not always in the same space, or even if you are in the same space or in the same location, um, this is a really great project management app uh, for, for teams. Not that you can't use it by yourself as an individual, but it, to really get the full benefits of all the features, it probably works best when you are working with others on this one. So you can track not only your business um, action steps, but also your personal action steps. Basically, um, the creators of the, of the app believe that you, you don't operate without your personal self. Your personal self is always with you even when you are uh, working on business things. And so if you need to keep track of them both, the app sort of encourages, encourages you to do that, which is a little different from what we typically tell our clients today. We usually say separate those two things out. Uh, but this app allows you to sort of track personal things as well as business things, and it mm -hmm. makes a, a point of uh, 
classifying your tasks as action steps. Um, that's because these are things that need to be completed. You have to take action. Right. And so there is a, a specific mention of action steps. And you can delegate them to other people. And as well, track the progress with those action steps right within the app. So if I were to delegate something to you, Carol, I will mm -hmm. see if you have worked on it or if you have not. And right. I can nudge you and say, uh, hello, <laughs> how's it going over there? <laughs> What's right. going on? Uh, so it's a nice way to collaborate with others and to sort of check in with them. Um, if you were to send me an app or, or send me a task, that is, or try to delegate something to me, and I thought that I would not be able to take care of it, I could also refuse it. Oh, okay. um, certainly, there would be some discussion and some communication right within the app about that, um, right. but I could refuse it. So that's an option there as well. With Action Method, you're also able to track references, and these are not action items. These are related items. Um, so you may have notes or drawings of some kind. They don't require action, but they sort of give a, a full picture of what mm. you're working on. So that's nice that you're able to have that there. And uh, you can use the action method on the web with your iPhone or iPad and as well with your Android device. So that's action method uh, by the folks over at Behance. So check that out. Unstuck is our next one, and probably should have started with this one first um, because it's it's before you start taking action. So this this app is like a I guess I would liken the app to a coach, a digital coach. Um, it's one that really gets you to take action in some way, to make a decision, or to set goals, to make a plan. Wherever you're feeling stuck, this is where Unstuck comes in. It really tries mm. to help you to get from stuck to progress, to make some step forward. And right. so the app asks you a variety of questions to really drill down to what they call your stuck moment, the, 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 the reason why you are stuck. And you may be stuck because you are afraid of something, or you don't have all the information you need, or you're just not quite sure where to start. You keep changing your mind. You know, it, it really tries to drill down to that very, very specific reason why you haven't taken some sort of action. And then it gives you targeted tips uh, to really get you to move forward and to make progress. There are, there are over 50 targeted tips, and there are 11 power tools that um, they allow you access to so that you can actually start taking those baby steps forward. Mm. So I, I really, I tested this one out for a blog post that I was writing, um, and it was, it did not feel like I was talking to an app or responding to an app. It really did feel as though someone was asking me some very thoughtful questions. Yeah. And so I liked that something that was digital had this sort of human-like feel to it. It did feel as though I was really working through this process and the app was helping me to do that. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was testing, so I didn't really have a true problem that I was right. testing. But even in that test environment, I felt, I felt the app did a really good job. So Fabulous. that's unstuck. Yes, and that's made for the iPad, not for iPhone, for iPad. It really is specific for the iPad. Mm -hmm. so keep that right. in And that is the final one in our category of um, conquer your tasks and projects. Mm -hmm. And so now we'll move on to backing up your files. And I know everyone who is uh, listening and watching um, will be backing up their files because that's really crucial. That's important. Um, if something happens to your local machine, so that's your mm -hmm. laptop, or even to your tablet, or whatever it is that you're, you're working with, if for some reason there is you know, a flood, or you leave your laptop in the coffee house, you know, whatever it is that happens, you should still be able to access your files. And so there are a few ways that you can do that. Um, and so what we'll be talking about today, the four that we'll be mentioning today, are Google Drive, Crash Plan, Meet Cloud, and Carbonate. Mm. Yes. So the first one, Google Drive. Um, we may not think of Google Drive as a way to back up documents because you know we probably remember Google Drive when it was Google Docs 
and we were right. interacting with our documents and collaborating with others in real time. But you can actually use it to store documents, really important documents that you want to make sure that you always have access to. You know, because you are storing this information on a, you know, on a cloud server or in a data center that is being hosted by Google, it is not uh, going to only be residing with you. So even if you have it on your local device, it will also be in the cloud somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, no, and certainly you need to have uh, some amount of trust or a lot of <laughs> amount of trust yes. in the fact that Google will maintain a safe, secure environment for your information. Um, but it is a good way to really keep a copy of those important documents that you have. You can very easily um, drag and drop files to your drive folder. Um, they do make it quite easy for you to do that. Um, and they also want you to give it a go because they, they give you five gigabytes for free. And you can get up to 25 gigabytes of space for a very small fee. And I believe that fee might be $3 a month, wow. maybe. Very and reasonable. Can, oh, extremely reasonable. Mm -hmm. So if you are you know, very sort of uh, data heavy um, with, with your, within your industry and you need to really keep a lot of information, I know realtors often have to do that, um, and some teachers as well, you, you mm -hmm. certainly uh, can make use of, of Google Drive. Um, and it is available on multiple platforms as well. So that's Google Drive. The next one is Crash Plan. Um, it is more of a traditional backup service. So uh, you are not necessarily storing items to collaborate. As you are with Google Drive, you are really just you're making a copy. You are backing it up, whether it's your personal or business data. And you're doing mm -hmm. that via the Crash Plan data centers. Um, you do get an automatic backup of your files one time a day. You can also have a continuous backup up to one time per minute. So that's a nice feature there. They do offer three plans. So depending on what your, your needs are, you can choose from those plans. Uh, there is a business plan as well as an enterprise plan. Certainly enterprise level would come with a higher price point. Uh, mm -hmm. But Crash Plan can um, sort of work with you if you're a small business or a solopreneur or if you are larger or someplace in between as well. Uh, what Crash Plan also allows you to do that some others don't is that you're able to not only back up to its data centers, but you can also back up to other computers or external, external hard drives. So you have the ability to tell Crash Plan where to put your backup. So that's a nice feature to have. Uh, so that, yes, so that's Crash Plan um, for Android, iOS devices, and also Windows Phone, Windows mm -hmm. Mobile. So, the next on the list is Meet Cloud. This is a fairly new feature. Those mm -hmm. who are familiar with the Meet company know that they um, tend to uh, be in the business of selling scanners. Um, they also sell a desktop scanner called the Meet Desk. They also have um, one called Meet Receipts, a mobile scanner that you can sort of travel with if you needed to. And you would be able to scan your receipts and upload them so that uh, you don't have to hang on to all that paper, but you do need the content on the paper. Well, now they've got Meet Cloud, which is cloud backup, and as well a digital filing system. So Meet Cloud comes with its own proprietary software that allows you to scan documents, receipts, uh, and as well business cards. And you can use any device, so you can uh, use your, your phone. So if, if you and I met at a networking event and I wanted to capture your uh, contact information, I could take a picture of your business card and send that to my Meet account, my Meet Cloud account. And I could very nicely hand you back your card because I wouldn't need it anymore. So I'd be able to capture that information uh, from you. So a very, very cool uh, addition to the, the Meet a suite of services and products. So definitely be, you're able to scan your files with your mobile device and then sync it with your Neat Cloud web account. You can email your documents and digital receipts as well as other files. Um, they're heavy with the keywords. So you know when you type in a keyword, all of the documents related or attached to that keyword will be, become available to you. So searching is a, is, it's a very, very cool feature that they have. You can also invite others to join your Neat Cloud account. Um, so you can share individual files or perhaps even entire folders. 
So you can just do this simply by adding a user to your account. And I don't think that this comes at any extra cost. I believe it's just a part of how it works. So I think that's a very cool feature to have. Mm -hmm. So that's Neat Cloud, and it, this is something that I do use. I do have a Neat Cloud account as well as a Neat Desk. Um, it's my right. preferred uh, scanner, so it is yeah. something that I am using. So this particular one, I can I can vouch for. I really love mm -hmm. the mobile feature. So if I am driving to see a client and I need to stop off and get uh, gas, you know, refuel, then mm -hmm. you know, once I get the receipt. I can snap a picture of that receipt and send it to my Neat account. And by the way, um, the Neat software has the ability to recognize when I send a receipt, a mm -hmm. document, or a business card. So I don't have to say, put it here. You know, it, it automatically recognizes those three specific types of documents. Oh, yeah, very, you know, very, very easy to use. They, yes, yes, saves your time. Yes. Absolutely. So a very cool uh, feature to have. Mm -hmm. So that's Neat Cloud. And then Carbonite. I'm sure uh, this one is pretty popular. Uh, most people probably have heard of Carbonite. Um, it is, again, traditional backup of your data. Um, I also use Carbonite, so I can vouch for its um, ability to do its job well, as my laptop um, went on the fritz last year, and I needed to collect all the information from that laptop and make sure that I had access to it on the new one. And all I did was tell Carbonite to please help. <laughs> and because I already had an account with them, it was, it was very easy to do. So um, you're able to back up your data on servers hosted by Carbonite. Uh, so many of the apps we talk about today will be cloud-based. Um, so that means you don't have to um, download something to your local machine. You can access it uh, via the web. Mm -hmm. So Carbonite does offer a few, uh, a few plans. Um, so there's the home or home office plan, which is good for one to two PCs. And once you start uh, moving into three PCs or more, then uh, you'll probably need to have a business plan. Um, you do get unlimited backup space. So there is one flat fee uh, for, the, uh, for the year for all of the plans. And there is unlimited backup space. So you're not paying based on the amount of space that you're using. You just get whatever space you need. You pay your flat fee, and then you're done. Uh, one of the features that I do like about Carbonate is that it has a recovery service, a courier recovery service. So if you did have a natural disaster and everything went out the door, Carbonate will send you um, a copy of your of your backup. It will actually snail mail it. It will mail it to you. So it <laughs> yes, very reassuring. Um, it is available for the home premier customers only. So if you're interested in that plan, certainly that's a good feature to have. Uh, but I, I think that's very, very cool that's a, that they would mail that to you. So mm -hmm. cool option there. You can use Carbonite on your Android iOS device, BlackBerry. Very cool. BlackBerry, you don't see that as often as perhaps no. you see Android or iOS. But yes, BlackBerry for Carbonite. And then, of course, there's the um, web-based application as well. And so that concludes our backup of files. Uh, the next on our list will be staying on top of social media. Mm. Now, social media can be so much fun. It can be interesting. You can learn lots. You can meet new people. You can you know, stay in touch with the, the old people, so to speak. It yeah. can be a huge time suck. <laughs> All of that being said, it can really take over your time. Mm -hmm. And so it helps to still be able to use it, you know, get your message out, connect with others, and really engage with um, others either in your industry, outside of it, or even potential clients. So it's a great way of really connecting with people. But because of the nature of it, you can really get sucked in. So you, I would certainly recommend that um, you know, folks use uh, uh, some sort of application that will help them to really stay on top of all the things that they do with social media. So. The, the apps that we'll be covering today, some of them may be familiar, like Hootsuite, mm -hmm. Buffer, Sendable, and Loom. And so we'll jump right in with Hootsuite. It is perhaps the, the big fish in the pond. It is the most, I think at this point, the most well-known, or at least one of them. 
you know, Tweet Deck at one point was um, perhaps the king of the hill with this, but now Hootsuite seems to have taken over in that department. Um, mm -hmm. You can use Hootsuite to manage your social media activities and accounts, and as well to see the results of those activities. So Hootsuite will give you analytics um, about how well the information you're sharing is being received by others. So you are able to schedule messages across eight networks. Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn are your big three, of course, followed mm -hmm. uh, by Google Plus and a few others like Foursquare. So I'm not sure how many people realize that you can update to a few um, other networks besides the, the top three that I just right. mentioned. You can also um, get a ton of apps added to your Hootsuite dashboard via their app directory. Um, so you can either add free apps or uh, premium apps to your dashboard, like mm -hmm. YouTube and Evernote. So if you're an mm -hmm. Evernote user and you want to save something that you found via social media to your Evernote account, you can do that with Hootsuite. If you have something in Evernote and you want to share it with, with your folks in social media, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or one of the, um, the other apps I mentioned, then you can do that too. So it's, it's a nice, robust um, social media management application. Mm -hmm. um, and it will give you some custom analytics. So you will see the insights from Facebook. You'll have Google Analytics. You'll see how many people are clicking on your Auli links. That's ow.ly links. And yeah. so there are a million different analytics that you can choose from. So again, very, very robust um, way. It does give you three plans. Um, you don't have to pay um, if you don't want to. With the free version, you get, I believe, up to five profiles. Now just keep in mind that if you have five Twitter profiles, then that's where you stop. But if you have a Twitter profile and then one Facebook profile and then one um, let's see, Google Plus profile, then, you know, that's still within your five. But mm -hmm. So just kind of keep in mind and be selective about which, which um, profiles you want to be able to post to. Of course, you can also use their pro version. I believe it is starting at around $9.99 per month, and you can have mm -hmm. unlimited profiles. So something else to, to think about there. So that's Hootsuite. And Buffer is our next one. I'm actually testing Buffer now um, mm -hmm. just to see how I feel about it. Um, it's a little bit different than, than what I'm used to looking at. A little bit more simple. It does the same thing uh, that Hootsuite does, just not as many social profiles available to you. Um, right. And that might, that might work for you. You may not have an Instagram account and all of these other social profiles, and perhaps you just have one or two, and so Buffer might be a really good option for you. So it does help you with social media management, and as well, it gives you some basic analytics. Um, so you'll see how many people liked um, the things that you've shared, um, how many times those things were shared, how many clicks, how many times you were retweeted. So you'll see some of those basic types of information. And you're able to automatically post, or what they call fill up your buffer. So you're sort of filling up your queue, if you would. Um, you're, you're sending in information that you want to share across a certain time frame. And so Buffer really allows you uh, to do that. Of course, you know, you want to keep in mind that you don't want to schedule everything um, mm -hmm. with social media. You certainly do want to, um, to be present and to be authentic at times. But Buffer is a good way to set up those automatic tweets. Mm -hmm. Buffer also has an app directory. So you can add free apps. All of them are free. Um, so like Feedly, Instapaper, one of my favorites. Paperly and, and several more. So uh, very, very uh, nice app. I think very simple interface and very easy to use. Now are Hootsuite and Buffer, are they taking on the Pinterest as well? I have not Pinterest. seen Pinterest, not yet, mm. but I imagine mm -hmm. that will be coming soon. I would because, imagine. Yes, Pinterest is becoming a huge, huge powerhouse in the social media world. Mm -hmm. um, so I suspect that someone somewhere behind the scenes is working on ways to update Pinterest. You can certainly go directly to Pinterest, or you can use Pinterly. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also, uh, I think Pinterly is now called uh, Reachly, to schedule your updates to Pinterest. But if you're looking for one place to go to do everything, I don't think Pinterest has been included yet. Not yet. But, okay. Yes. Good to know. But hopefully Thank soon. You. Hopefully soon. Right. 
Okay, so this next one, sendable. Oh my goodness, I, it's it's like Hootsuite on steroids. <laughs> it's it's massive. Um, I don't use sendable myself, but I certainly learned a lot um, as I was doing research about it. Um, it is extremely robust. You are getting social media management and some very very cool analytics, uh, customer relationship management, so CRM, and it's also a marketing tool. So you can send emails, you can send SMS text. I mean, it gives you these marketing features. You can add a widget to your website to have people sign up. You know, when you think mm -hmm. of a social media management tool, you right. don't normally think about email marketing. But Sendable just sort of mashes all of these various things that uh, a, a, a small business owner might need to do or want to do and right. puts them all in this one neat package um, on one interface. So a very, very robust feature. I think probably uh, better for um, medium to larger sized agencies or perhaps those who are uh, maybe managing social media for others. Mm -hmm. This could be a really good option. So if you are a VA or a virtual assistant who is managing the social media for several clients, Sendable might really be a good option for you. Um, one of the nice features is that you'll also get an alert each time your company is reviewed. So if it's reviewed on Yelp, City Search, or TripAdvisor, Sendable will send you an alert saying, hello, someone just said something about your company. You might want to go check it out. So it doesn't matter good or bad. Go check it out because you do have the option, of course, of responding no matter what you see. Isn't that cool? Yes. So Sendable, is, as I said, it's it's it just gives you so, and I, I haven't even touched on all the features that it has, but mm -hmm. it just gives you so much that I think if you were um, an agency who were um, you know managing the accounts of others, I think it would really really be a good option. Not that Hootsuite isn't, but I feel you know Sendable just gives you so much more that it might be your preferred your preferred choice. Right. All right. So that's Sendable. And this next one is so far from the others that I've mentioned, and I, I put it in purposely because it's simple. It is extremely simple. It, you know, it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, and if you just say, listen, I'm only into Twitter and maybe sometimes Facebook, then Bloom is probably for you. It doesn't even have a web-based app. It is all Android. It's not even iOS, no, no iPhone, no iPad. Oh, wow. For the Android user, um, if you want to post to Twitter, and you can have several Twitter accounts if you'd like, and you just want to do Twitter. If Twitter, if you've discovered that Twitter is where your peeps are, where your their clients are, where people that you want to connect with are, you get the best return on your time, and Twitter is it, then Plume, you know, I think Plume could really work very, very well for you. Um, as I said, very simple, very easy, using it on your smartphone, your Android. Um, it does allow you to auto-complete your hashtags and username so you don't have to type it all in. As you start typing, it will just propagate for you. Um, you can also organize your tweets by color. So if you're trying to track um, a specific conversation, you can certainly do that. So that's really nice. I thought that was great. And as an organizer, I love color. So <laughs> I love that organized by color feature. Um, and you do have two, two plans. The first one is free, though it is ad supported, so you're going to see ads. If you want to get, get away from that, then you can get the premium version. And I think it may be $4.99 in the Google Play area. So mm -hmm. nothing, nothing too costly. And it just might really work well for you. So that's Plume for Android. Very simple, so different from Sendable that I think um, I, should, I, couldn't, I could not include it in today's list. Great contrast, thank you. Yes, yes. All right, and so now we're moving on to managing your dollars and your cents, um, or depending on where you're located, I suppose we'll call them something else, managing your finances. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll be covering today FreshBooks, SkyClerk, Cashew, and One Receipt. Mm -hmm. The first one, I use all the time. FreshBooks. It is cloud accounting. Uh, it used to be just an invoicing application where, you know, we did business together, I'd send an invoice and you'd pay me. 
Um, but now it has rebranded itself very recently, as recently as the last few months, as a cloud accounting application. And so you're able to now not only track and send invoices, but you can also track your time and your expenses. Mm. You can import your expenses from your bank or your credit card accounts, which is something that is completely new. Um, yeah. So it is really trying to be accounting and not just invoicing. FreshBooks can be used by individuals, so solopreneur, or with teams. So if I had a team of organizers, um, I could assign certain clients to specific people, and they would be managing them within the FreshBooks framework. Mm. So a very nice feature there. FreshBooks does get automatically backed up to the FreshBooks data center, data center, data centers, that is. Mm. Um, so all of your data is going to be nice and safe and securely backed up. You do get 12 gateways so that you can receive payments. Um, one of the most popular ones, of course, is PayPal. And that's listed mm -hmm. there. Um, so that's um, a good feature there, depending on where you are. You also get accounting reports. So you'll see profit and loss, accounts aging. So you'll see if there's someone who hasn't paid yet and you need to sort of give them a reminder, you'll see how far along that, that account is. So FreshBooks, very easy to use, very intuitive to use. Um, it does not come with payroll, which is fine for me because I, I don't need payroll. Um, mm -hmm. If you need payroll, you probably need to find a different application. QuickBooks probably would be the preferred application there. Um, mm -hmm. But if you want something a bit more simple, and you just want to sort of really track time, expenses, and be sure that that income is coming in with those invoices, then I think FreshBooks is a fabulous option. One I've used for years as well. Oh, good. Yes, yeah. it's awesome. And the next one is called SkyClerk. Interesting name. Um, it does the same thing. It is cloud accounting. It is most similar, I think, to FreshBooks. Um, it does give you a nice dashboard um, so you can see all of your account activity all on one page. So you'll see profit and loss, income and expenses. You can see all that sort of nicely laid out on your dashboard. You know, you can import your, your digital receipts. It integrates really well with, with Shoebox. Uh, Shoebox.com, by the way, is an app that lets you turn your paper receipts into digital ones. So you can send off all of your paper receipts to Shoebox and they will scan them and categorize them for you. And so that feature then integ integrates really well with SkyClerk. So that might be something you might have an interest in. The mm -hmm. one thing that it does not have yet is an invoicing feature. But not to worry, they're working on it. <laughs> you know, as I check their um, their website, you know, very clearly, clearly they said, yep, this is coming. It's coming soon. It's not here yet, but it will be here soon. So I suspect that once it adds that feature, it will be more of a direct um, competitor for FreshBooks. Yeah. Um, I do think they're very similar. Um, so check out SkyClerk. You can use it with your Android or iOS device and also on the web. And this next one, I love the name. It's called Cashew, also mm -hmm. cloud accounting. Um, some of the differences between Cashew and the ones that I mentioned before are that you can have multiple users. So you can give your accountant or a CPA access, and there is no extra cost to do that. So I really, really like that quite a bit. Um, it also supports multiple currencies. So no matter where you are, you are likely able to use uh, Cashew as it does have over a hundred currencies, currencies that it supports. Very cool. Yes. You can also send custom invoices. And so Cashew integrates with FreshBooks. What's, you know, what's nice is that a lot of these applications are sort of integrate with each other. Right. So that if you already are using one, they kind of make it easy for you to continue using that one if you like it and you're familiar with it. Um, so even though Cashew does its own invoices, it won't force you to use those invoices if you like using FreshBooks. So right. that's a nice partnership there. Something that Cashew does that no other one does is give you double entry accounting. Mm -hmm. that's, this basically means that each of your transactions are accounted for either as a debit or as a credit. Now, your CPA or your accountant or your bookkeeper will love, love, love this feature. Um, it makes their life a lot easier. 
Um, it makes my life not easy because I don't like doing all of that. <laughs> but for but for your accountant, this this will be a great feature to have, and I don't believe that any of the others have this feature. So that's something to think about. Mm -hmm. You can use Cashew on your iPad only as well as on the web. I say only because not on your iPhone or, right. or your iPad or iPod Touch. It only has to be iPad. So keep that in mind. Oh, and by the way, there are three, uh, three billing plans. Uh, you can do monthly billing or annual billing or use the free option. Um, the annual billing, I, do, I believe you get a, a price break on the annual billing. I think it's something like sixteen dollars uh, per month for annual billing, and if you're doing monthly, then it's twenty dollars per month. So right. still, still rather reasonable, I think, for a small business owner. Mm -hmm. All right. And so next, we are going to be talking about one receipt. It is not necessarily. Uh, like the others in that we're really focusing in on receipt management, so both your paper and your mm -hmm. digital receipts, but you're able to collect and really categorize them all in one place, and that's with the One Receipt app. Um, it is for your iOS device, so it, there is no web-based device, and it's only for iPhone or iPad. Um, so you're able to send uh, one receipt, either your digital receipt, so some some vendors are now emailing us their receipts, so we can mm -hmm. send that automatically. Uh, one receipts will, will automatically check your inbox for those receipts, which uh -huh. I think is very cool. Uh -huh. um, or you can take a picture of your paper receipt or email your digital mm. receipts directly to one receipt. You will also get a monthly spending summary. So mm. very, very nice there. Um, so you can sort of track where you are, I think. You know, one receipt probably works really well for those personal expenses, but I can see that if someone really likes going to their local office supply store versus buying something online, sort of want to go somewhere and do this, this could be a really nice option for tracking some of your business receipts right. as well. Uh, one receipt will also let you know when your return policy is up. So if you bought something and you've decided it's not for you, or it doesn't work the way that you thought it would and you need to return it, one receipt will recognize the ex expiry dates and let you know what those are. So I think that's an awesome, awesome feature. That is a great feature, definitely. Yes. So a mobile app, um, oh, yeah, a mobile app for you there. Um, mm. So that's one receipt. So um, I just moved ahead a little bit too quickly in my slide presentation, but so far <laughs> these are all of the apps that I think you should definitely take a look at um, yeah. whether you're managing your finances through social media or other things. You know, apps can really bring a level of organization and streamline uh, sort of the processes that you um, you probably do on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, and thank you so much. Well, I just wanted to mention how valuable it is to have somebody who knows what they're talking about to go through them all, because I think you mentioned there's a blizzard of them out there. Oh, yes. It's really hard to know, well, what works? What are, what are people using and how are they finding it? And your, your, your reviews were excellent. Thank you. Oh, good. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. It's nice to be able to have a starting point because there are so many apps that do similar things. And even some of the ones I mentioned today, though similar, they each have some crucial features, um, some key features that are different uh, from each other. So this is a great starting point, jumping off point, and figuring out which apps would work best for you and your small business. Fabulous. All right. So uh, yeah, we are all ahead. set. Yes, we're all set with, with, with all of the information for today. Um, and I do have a few offers that I wanted to share with the folks who are um, participating um, with today's uh, presentation. So unless you have questions for me, I'll move right into that. No, go right ahead. OK, very good. All right, so special offers. If you are interested um, in learning more about what my company, Soho Tech Training, does, I am very, very happy to offer a 30-day free trial uh, to those of you who are participating uh, Practice Space Solutions uh, members. Uh, and to sign up for that free trial, you just need to visit the URL that's listed on the screen. It is bit.ly slash 
PPS33, and I'll certainly honor the 30-day free trial for you there. Um, by the way, my company, uh, Soho Tech Training, uh, is a membership website that allows um, small business owners to figure out the right technology tools for them. So whether you want to know about the latest and the greatest app, or perhaps you have a WordPress blog and you're trying to get more information about that, or you just want to figure out the best ways to be productive and the apps that can help you to do that, um, Soho Tech Training can help in that department. Um, there is a member forum, a lot, which is private, so it's only for members. Um, there's also a private website, um, a resource library. We do monthly teleclasses, as well as action days. Those are days when we uh, schedule a day, uh, probably once every other month right now, where you can actually get stuff done. So usually tech-related items, so setting up your newsletter if you haven't done it yet, um, or figuring out the right app for you. So there are lots of features, so I'm happy to pass that trial on. Wonderful. This, Thank you. Oh, sure. The second offer that I have is we have um, created at the end of last year a technology guide called Five Steps to Create a Rockstar Brand with YouTube. <laughs> YouTube is um, a pretty popular so social network in and of itself. It is connected very much to Google Plus. So if you are mm -hmm. learning about Google Plus, there is a good connection there and some nice SEO traction that you can get with Google Plus. And so YouTube, we've got this guide that shows you how to get started and talks with you quite a bit about some of the things that you should be doing with that YouTube channel. Uh, so we've got a 50% off offer for practice-based solutions. And to receive that, again, just download um, the, the uh, document at bit.ly slash YouTube half off. So easy to remember. Right. Easy to remember there. So, and finally, again, you know, I'm certainly happy to be on the call today. Um, very, very happy to be here. I'm happy to also allow folks to sign up for um, the Soho Tech newsletter. Um, it is a free newsletter. You don't have to do anything uh, to get it other than give me your email address, of course. Um, and you can get that at bit.ly slash Soho News. And so we'll share tech tips as well as the best apps and marketing tools for your small business. Thank you. And, and Deb, I see that your website is there. Is your email, what is your email where people can contact you? Sure. My email address is Deb, very easy, Deb at SohoTechTraining.com. Wonderful. Yes. That is great. Now, this is fabulous information because I know so many of us are feeling a little lost in the weeds with this, so this is perfect. <laughs> So thank you for the generous offer, and thank you so much for sharing all of that information. I'll tell you, I took extensive notes because okay. there's a number of those, those apps that are going to make my life easier, too. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad to hear that. So, Deb, thank you. I just want, on behalf of Practice Pay Solutions and on behalf of Empower Consulting Group, I want to thank you so much for doing this for us today, and I'm sure that you'll be getting lots of questions and inquiries and people taking you up on your offer because regardless of what brought us into business, we all still have to inter interface with the tech world, and yes. you've made it much, much simpler today. Well, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. So for everyone who has been on the webinar, thank you for attending. I'm going to uh, end it right now, and thank you once more for, for taking the time to, uh, to learn so much from Deb. Thank you. Bye-bye for now.